Good evening and welcome to Haven Now, your source for campus and local news in Lock Haven. My name is Tristan Kleinfelder. And I'm Alexandria Herrera, and here's a brief look at what's happening today around Lock Haven. Rumors about bed bugs, a police open forum, the future of the trolley service, and a sizable drug bust. We'll look at a winter sports recap, comment on the Major League Baseball trading whirlwind, and preview an upcoming boxing tournament on campus. All this coming at you during this edition of Haven Now. In local news, the Lock Haven Goodwill located on Walnut Street was rumored to have bed bugs. Last week, there was a Facebook post shared that showed the item a customer bought contained bed bugs. When asking some of the employees at the Goodwill store about the situation, they had denied knowledge of the bed bugs. The employees did not want to be named, but they were quick in denying the rumor. They explained how each item that came into the store is sanitized and marked with a yellow sticker to show the item was treated. However, they do not treat clothes when they are brought into the store. It couldn't be confirmed if the item was yellow tagged or not. The employee, however, pulled out a log that people sign when buying items with the yellow stickers attached. When referring back to the bed bugs, she also added that there has not been any signs or a formal complaint made to the store. Attention Lock Haven students! Later this month, Public Safety will be holding an open forum which will allow students to bring up concerns you may have. This is an open forum not only to students but also the public. This will be happening on Monday, February 24th at 10 a.m. in Bentley Dining Hall. When talking to Patrol Officer Scott Bisman, he said this is a huge opportunity for students to ask questions and discuss, openly discuss problems they may have to the Chief and other directors at the event. This will be the first time the new Police Chief, Tim Stringer, will be holding this kind of event for students and the public. Stringer was hired last summer as the new Police Chief of Lock Haven University. Bisman also said it allows students to talk about many of the complaints here on campus. I get a lot of questions on a daily basis about parking tickets on campus. This will allow Stringer to explain the new procedures, the mission, and the new integrity we go by on a daily basis. Don't forget to date Lock Haven students Monday, February 24th at 10 a.m. at Bentley Dining Hall. There have recently been rumors of a possible trolley system shutdown here at Lock Haven University. These rumors have caused quite a bit of concern for students. Students felt that taking away the trolley system would be a great inconvenience to everyone. They expressed their concerns over how they were going to get to their classes on time if they were going from main campus to east campus in the 15 minute break between classes. After speaking to the facilities director, Marshall Rope, I can confirm that the trolley system will not be shutting down. Rote stated, I don't know where that information came from. No one is losing their jobs. Rote went on to say that the system as it is will be going through some changes which will be announced shortly, but the university has no intention of taking it away. LHU plans to outsource the trolley service instead of having it run by the university itself. There is no information yet as to what company is supposed to take over, but these changes will most likely not take place until the upcoming fall semester. What did crystal meth, cocaine, and marijuana all have in common? They were all drugs being pushed by the 29 alleged drug dealers who were recently arrested in the Clinton County area. The Clinton County Drug Task Force and District Attorney David Strauss ended a year-long investigation into the drug ring with a huge bust that took down dealers with ages ranging from 19 to 44. I was unable to get a statement from District Attorney Strauss, but according to the Lock Haven Express, more than a dozen different law enforcement agencies from surrounding companies assisted with the arrest, including the U.S. Marshal, Lock Haven Police Department, and the Keystone Central School District Police. The investigation was conducted by using a coalition of undercover officers who made a series of controlled purchases in Lock Haven, Mill Hall, and other surrounding areas. All suspects are set to be prosecuted by Clinton County District Attorney's Office. LHU Boxing went to Penn State Invitational last weekend with three students. Avery Drake, Eliana Bates, Steve Kuchis, and Coach Steve Cooper. We got to have a sit-down interview with Coach Cooper about his thoughts going into the, into the fights this weekend at Penn State and also the Lock Haven Invitational, which is set to take place on February 15, 2020. Coach Cooper said that they've been training hard all semester for this, and he's spoken to the other coaches to match fighters according to build and experience. He said, so you wouldn't have someone who is experienced and good going against a novice who isn't quite ready for that type of action, Cooper stated. Avery Drake, one of the fighters that went to the Penn State fight, said this when asked about how he prepared for this past weekend. I keep my nerves down as much as I can and just continue through my daily routine like any other day. I also always believe I will win. In my opinion, you have to have that mindset to be, a combat, to be in a combat sport. LHU Boxing brings it home for the LHU Invitational, February 15th, 7 p.m. in Thomas Fieldhouse. 
Over winter break, Lock Haven sports teams were busy. The boys basketball team went five and six since January 3rd and is currently sitting with a record of 10 and 11 with five regular season games remaining. Senior guard Christian Kelly surpassed 1,000 points in the game against Kutztown on Saturday. Women's basketball has also had a rough break as they went four and eight since January 3rd. The wrestling team went seven and six over break. They went three and three in conference matchups while winning two at home and two on the road. Spring is right around the corner and that means baseball is starting to begin their season. The boys traveled to North Carolina for a series against UNC Pembroke. The team went one and three on series and is now looking at the PSAC men crossover at Glendale State later this month. Also starting is the defending PSAC champion girls softball team. The girls will travel to the 2020 Snowbird Softball Freeze Out at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina this upcoming week. Over the weekend, MLB fans have been put through a storm of trade, talk, trade talks between three teams, including the former MVP Mookie Betts and, and fellow teammate David Price. The trade talk was between the Boston Red Sox, Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Minnesota Twins. The deal would have played out between the three teams by the Dodgers receiving Mookie Betts, David Price, and money from Boston. The Red Sox would receive Alex Verdugo from Los Angeles and Brustar Gretol from Minnesota. The Twins would, would receive Kent Ameda from Los Angeles. However, it seems that the trade has started to fall through as the Red Sox looked at Gretol's medical examination and asked the Twins to add another player to the trade. All this is after a promising startup starting lineup from the Boston Red Sox for the upcoming season, but now they'll have a huge spot to fill. It'll be very interesting to see. Here's Alexandria to catch up on current events. Mm -hmm. This Wednesday, February 12th, the Criminal Justice, Business, and Computer Science Departments are hosting the Bit of Fitathon, a fundraiser from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Student Rec Center. Popular fitness classes like HIT, Core Fitness, Zumba, and more will be taught in 15-minute segments throughout the night. Classes will be taught by ROTC cadets, Lock Haven YMCA instructors, faculty, and Lock Haven alum. The suggested donation is $5 for students or $10 for faculty, staff members, or community members. All proceeds benefit the Clinton County Women's Center. Thank you. On Thursday, February 6th, the Lock Haven University hosted a spring internship and career fair in the East Campus Gymnasium. Vendors from all over Pennsylvania were in attendance. AccuWeather, Bayada, Hershey Entertainment and Resort, Little League Baseball, the PA Department of Corrections, Substitute Teacher Services, and more all came to talk to students about possible job opportunities with their respective companies. Most tables had candy and take-home flyers to give to students. Vendors also offered to look at students' resumes to get a better feel for them as a job candidate. The conclusion, at the conclusion of the event, students were asked to take a survey. Leading up to the event, students received Tip of the Week emails from the LHU Center of, for Career and Professional Development. These tips included Get Hired videos, resume strategies, and more. For more information on upcoming events here at LHU, visit Lock Haven EDU and click on the Events tab on the right-hand side of the homepage. Group fitness classes are back and better than ever at the Student Rec Center. There are five different classes taught by five different instructors for spring 2020 semester. These classes range in time, but they are all during the week, Monday through Friday. Classes include HIT, Full Body Strength, 30 Minute Cardio Blast, Zumba, and Yoga. Two classes are offered early at 7.30 a.m., HIT on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Full Body Strength on Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday morning. Every other class is offered in the afternoon and evening time. No matter what your schedule is, there is a class that can work for you. There are one to two cl classes offered th this semester than last, according to the Brad Dolly, the director of the Student Rec Center. Classes are free to students and faculty. And now let's shift gears and talk about entertainment. Here's a bit of commentary on last night's Oscars. The 2020 annual Oscar award event was last night and the entire cinema world was on display. Many surprises were seen during the event from who went home with awards to the performances that people gave. 
International film Parasite was a recipient of four awards last night, becoming the most awarded film at two, the 2020 Oscars. However, it wasn't the recipient for the, some of the most major awards that were given last night. The headline awards were Best Picture, Best Lead Actor and Actress, Best Supporting Actor and Actress, and they were all dispersed evenly between many movies. Best Motion Picture was awarded to Parasite. The Best Leading Actor was Hoquan Phoenix for his performance in the movie Joker. Best Supporting Actor was awarded to Brad Pitt for, for his performance in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Best Leading Actress was awarded to Renee Zellweger uh, for her performance in Judy. Best Supporting Actress was awarded to Laura Dern for her performance in Marriage Story. Many other films were recognized in the awards through nominations and all of their hard work was acknowledged throughout the duration of the show. This has been Haven Now. Tune in next Wednesday at 5 p.m. for our next edition. Thank you everyone for watching and have a safe and educational week.